What's going on everybody? It's Josh here with Zero Gravity. I got some great news for you today. I also wanted to cover a few things that have been going on in the market that I believe are going on with the stock, uh, where it is now, how it got there and where it's going, as well as some of the great news that's been coming out and some of the stuff I think we have to look forward from now until uh, earnings on May 4th. Uh, like I said, there's so much great stuff going on, it's hard to keep up with it, but I try to find new and interesting stuff so I don't keep beating you down with the same stuff you're seeing everywhere else. So the first thing here is Acorn Financial Advisory Services has increased their position almost 400% in their holdings of Palantir. Now, the reason we find this out is just because of their most recent 13F filings. They don't have to publicly announce or anything like that, like ARC. A lot of these companies will have to wait until they do their 13F filings, and then we'll find out how many shares of Palantir and stuff they've picked up. Um, they're up to 84,000 shares now. They've increased at 66,000 since their last quarter. But the great news is you got to look at all the other companies. As SG America Securities, uh, they have $1.1 million worth now. BlackRock Inc., one of the largest uh, early investors, I think, in NEO, they have 33 million shares now. Uh, you also have, who else is here? Glassman Wealth Services is uh, up 689% in the fourth quarter. Glassman Wealth Services now owns 7,145 shares of the stock, valued at 168,000. That's not huge or anything, of course, there, um, but it's still significant. Axel Capital Management LLC picked up more in the fourth, fourth quarter, 13 million worth. Uh, and then International Assets Management LLC has 439,000 worth. Now, if you've been watching me or listening to me for a little while, you know I've been preaching this and pushing it. I think a lot of the reasons why this, while the stock is down, a lot of institutions are going to step in and start purchasing shares, uh, making the float smaller and smaller, giving us greater opportunities to go parabolic in the future. Um, as everyone knows, Kathy Wood has been you know, doubling down on her positions and continuing to grow it. Uh, but it's great to see that everybody else is kind of picking picking it up as well, following her pace. And I think this might be a lot of what is driving the stock market today, because as we see more mo more new filings, we'll see more and more institutions stepping in and purchasing shares of Palantir. Uh, another great thing that I've seen out there today is uh, Peter Thiel actually hinted that Palantir could be great in helping the government, you know, take control of uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, not control of, but be able to manage it, um, manage all the data from people trading and you know paying and stuff like that with it. Uh, pretty much just scanning transactions. And the big thing they're going to be looking for here is, of course, tax evasion. That's one of the government's biggest problems with cryptocurrency, and that's one of the greatest ideas behind cryptocurrency is that uh, it's not as easily managed as you know cash or checks or you know credit credit card receipts. It's a little more. Uh, secretive and hidden which that's why the government's most scared of you know but it's not for the reasons that you should be scared it's going to be you know human trafficking drug trafficking stuff like that is why they're really wanting to you know kind of regulate it but anyways if palantir was to get a hold of some kind of assets to be able to handle that we're talking in the trillions and trillions of dollars. This this company would just absolutely go parabolic if the government hired it and honestly I think there is a good chance as we see Palantir continue to grow and grow, we see more and more deals come from the government. Uh, and a lot of people are worried about the government, but the government has all the money. So I'm cool with them signing more and more contracts with the government. Uh, one of the other things I think we have to look forward to here is Biden wants to push his $2 trillion uh, infrastructure deal. Now in the infrastructure deal, there's gonna be a lot of you know rebuilding roads, repairs, uh, bridges, stuff like that, of course, as well. Uh, but the most important parts that I thought were Palantir could definitely come in here is they're looking towards going green uh, or net zero as they say uh, and it's just trying to get away from a lot of the common issues that we've been going through in the past and I think Palantir is is leading more and more of that net zero market helping companies figure out ways to be more and more productive and cost less and less damages to the environment. Um, and I think the infrastructure deal would definitely bring some new contracts for Palantir, just like I think the second stimulus, we're yet to see some deals that are coming out of that yet, but I'm pretty sure Palantir is going to pick up a hefty share of those deals as well. But the reason we're going in the net zero is like I said, Palantir, you're going to see it more and more and more in that sector, just like today. United Airlines partnered uh, with Palantir for their efforts 
to get rid of uh, pretty much overuse of fuel consumptions and stuff like that. And uh, ideally, they want to get to a low carbon sustainable, sustainable environment where they continue to uh, save, reduce, reuse that kind of deal and, and overall help with their carbon outputs. And it's great to see Palantir being used for that. Now, as you may know, there was a big market sell off yesterday morning. Uh, as soon as the market opened, there was a huge push down after we had initially broken into new highs the evening before. But anyways, uh, getting to my ideas of why I think that happened is, as you know, there's a lot of people that have been in Palantir, uh, not for the long haul, but they've gotten into it recently on all these drops. And a lot of them have been stressing, freaking, you've probably seen them on, you know, Facebook groups, social media, Reddit, you know, complaining the stock never goes anywhere, the stock never does anything, blah, blah, freaking blah, as you might hear. <laughs> but anyways, so the, the stock finally reaches up overnight right here. Um, and after hours, we ended up breaking through this resistance level here. And I'll say resistance level just because I'll kind of show you. Anyways, uh, going back to the story here, why I think this ended up breaking through is during the after hours, it took that initial rush up over 24.15 here. And that had, I have it drawn out on my uh, charts on TD, but that's been kind of a long standing um, <clears throat> uh, resistance level there. And we ended up crossing through it in the after hours time. So I think whenever the market finally opened, we've seen a lot of those paper handed people, as they would say. Um, with their sell orders already set, you know, probably in the 24, 30, 24, 50 range, whatever, just trying to exit out of their positions uh, and move on with their life, so to say. I think we've seen a lot of those kick in. And then once we started hitting new lows, I think just more stop losses and stop losses started uh, triggering and getting set and kicking in until we hit the bottom here. There was actually no, I didn't see any negative news, anything bad in the market, uh, really, that would justify this. So the only thing I could think is just a extreme amount of uh, sell orders got triggered and, and kind of ripped the market down. Uh, today we've seen a pretty nice recovery, which should have been the path we were on originally. So I think that's a good sign that we had a quick bounce back and even reached new higher levels. Now, as you can see here, I had a nice wedge created prior to this and we actually broke out of it. And then we came back and retested it, which is phenomenal. That's exactly what you want to see. Uh, with a very you know positive momentum stock right now um, we did reach new highs today we broke through all those resistance and we're sitting right around the 2540 mark I think there's a good chance with the catalyst tomorrow afternoon that we'll see a little bit of an increase um, I don't think it'll get too crazy but you never know how this uh, double click event will go uh, it might open a lot of eyes it might pick up a lot of new investors it might push a lot of stuff forward but you have to remember on May 4th, before market open, we do have earnings. Um, and that's a huge, huge thing to watch right now. We've seen a lot of huge contracts getting brought in. We've seen a lot of great news. Uh, this is an, a time when we'll actually get to see it on paper. And we'll be able to you know, make better fundamental analysis out of the company and how it's growing uh, to see if they can, can be able to continue this growth that they've been on. I think they're actually going to probably beat expectations and I think most people do as well. We have one of the highest, um, one of the highest convictions on any stocks on the market right now. Uh, one other thing I wanted to get to is I'm a big gamma gamma squeeze theory kind of guy. And once we hit over 25, there was 81,725 call options that became in the money. Uh, 2450, 14,000, 24, 40,000. 23.5, 13,000. This are these are absolutely huge numbers for call options. So I think with the potential of the push and all of these call options getting triggered in the money, uh, and market makers having to buy those stocks to account for them, I think we could definitely see a gamma squeeze up. And you can go every week forward, and there's pretty significantly large numbers of calls that are going to continue to be hit. So we could definitely, definitely be in some gamma squeeze potential here. And I just think that's another thing 